Hi everyone! Today, I decided to talk to all of you and share some wonderful stories. It's been a rough week, and in today's video, we will be discussing some ways and specifically some tips on how we can maximize our time plus use our time more effectively to study English. So, let's get started. Have you ever felt like you do not have much time, or you are constantly wasting time a result to the fact that you do not have much time to learn English? This is a very common habit that a lot of people have. Maybe you spend too much time learning English grammar that you do not have much time to dedicate yourself to practice speaking, practicing speaking, or singing or just enjoying listening to some English. So I'm here to help. First of all, number one, you have to set clear goals. There are two types of goals. We have short-term goals and long-term goals. For short-term goals, you have to focus on specific tasks like learning new vocabulary, practicing grammar rules, or improving your pronunciation. So those are all short-term goals. Short-term goals means that you can easily achieve it in a short period of time. As for long-term goals, those goals are more difficult to achieve and requires more effort. So some examples of long-term goals can be you have to define your overall English learning objectives, your overall English goals, such as achieving a certain language proficiency level or passing an exam. For me, my long-term goals in learning English is that I have to pass maybe the C1 or C2 level test. So that is... A more difficult goal and it requires more effort. So very important for you to set clear goals. It's also very important to have a note. For example, here is my note and in here there are some tasks that I need to achieve. If I finish something, I will tick in the next box. This is actually really beneficial because it motivates you and I really like ticking boxes so I actually have to finish doing it in order to tick my box. Number two, create a study schedule. Creating a study schedule can mean lots of things and remember dedication is key so you have to allocate dedicated time for English learning every day or at regular period of time. For me, even though I'm not saying that you have to learn English every single day and you have to completely forget your mother's tongue, but in order for something to be regularly practiced and in order for you to maximize a specific English level, you have to devote your time to learning it. There are many ways. You don't have to sit in your desk and learn them seriously. You can just listen to English songs or you can clean the house while listening to some English. For me, every single day, I spend 30 minutes every morning listening to English news. And this has been my habit for many, many years. Before I go to school, I have 30 minutes to eat breakfast. So while I eat breakfast, I can listen to some English news. Or you can even watch your favorite English show. So the point here is that you do not waste your time. And you know how to use your time wisely. Because a lot of people let time pass by without even noticing how precious time really is. And number two, you must remember how to prioritize important tasks. You have to determine which areas of English that you need more attention and allocate more time to them. For me, I need to find more time to practice writing essays in English because you know that writing is a pretty hard skill. Even though I'm 
currently satisfied with my speaking skill. Writing is not so good, so it's important for you to pay attention to what you really need to improve and work on that. The reason that so many English learners they kept kind of like they don't improve much is because they haven't discovered areas of English that they need improving. If you find that your listening skill isn't that great, and when you take some listening tests. You do not get a very high score. Then I promise you that it's time to work on that. Or your grammar isn't that great. Work on your grammar. So make sure that you work on skills that you need improving. Don't just learn something that you already know. Learn something that you don't know. Right? What's the point of learning something when you already know the basic rules? And number three, thirdly, very important. Is break down task. Break down task into smaller steps. This can be simple. You can divide larger task, like reading a book or writing an essay, into smaller and more manageable steps. For me, when I practice writing, instead of diving straight in into writing an essay, because If you dive in to do something that you're not very comfortable with, or you find it extremely hard, then it will take a pretty long time to be able to finish that specific task. So in my way, I usually break down into smaller tasks. Before I write the essay, I will spend around 30 minutes doing some research or writing an outline. So that I will know what to write about and what points I need to make. After that, I spend around one hour or maybe more to write my first draft. The first draft, when writing, is just a draft, and it doesn't need to be perfect. After writing the first draft, I will wait for maybe the next day to write the official second draft. So in my way, I know a lot of people. They just dive straight into writing the essay. They don't have, and they don't like. They don't have an outline, or because if you don't have an outline, it will be difficult for you to think of something, and you will just forever focus on grammar. For me, I focus on ideas first, and then grammar. So I trust, like trust me, your essay will be so much better. And make sure time is also important. So it's crucial for you to estimate your time, like estimate the time required for each task, and stay organized. Today, I spend my time effectively to learn two skills: includes writing and reading. If you spend way too much time on learning something, and this means that you will not have enough time to learn the other skill. Make sure you estimate your time wisely and separate it effectively for each skill of English. Number four, it's crucial to minimize and even like completely avoid distraction. Examples of distraction can be your phone notification, your friends calling you, or some outer thoughts that. Or your like imagination. Maybe you have an imagination friend. Those are all distraction. Remember, find a quiet and comfortable place to study, where you can focus. It's also very advisable to take small breaks. For example, if you have been studying for one hour, then it's advisable to have a break for five to ten minutes to relax yourself, so you will not feel too tired or exhausted. And that's exactly what I did. And even though when I learn English, I do have to use a computer to use an online dictionary. And there's a way I usually turn off all notification, but you can still check your phones after you finish studying, right? So make sure you avoid all distraction. And sec, like the next tip that I usually use is by reviewing your. Progress. It's also very advisable to have a book or a little note to check your progress. 
Like, what have you learned for this week? Have you improved any skill? Have you improved anything specifically? And check your progress. If you see that you have made significant improvements, then that's a good sign. For example, you have finished unit one, and the next week you have finished two more units. That's something very remarkable. So make sure you check your progress because even though when you learn something, you must take time. But make sure that don't take too much time, or else you will not have enough time for other tasks as well. And for me, it's also important to reward yourself because I think that by rewarding, you'll have something to look forward to, and this will motivate you on your way of learning English. So that's all my simple tips on how you can schedule your daily life to find some extra time to learn English, and not just English, but any other language that you are interested in. Bye.